Making small threads in the workshop is quick and easy when you use dies. However, manually threading by hand can have issues if you start the thread wrong or if you use uneven tool pressure. It's very easy for the part to become screwed and not in the good way. The solution is a machine mounted holder for a die which is able to freely float with no side play. And so I'll make a tailstock die holder. The main tool body will ride back and forth on a guide shaft, and I'll make this shaft first. I'm just going to be using the mild steel I have on hand. I turned the guide shaft first, and I marked at multiple locations to confirm I'm not accidentally turning a taper. To maintain concentricity when flipping the part, I mounted it in a collet chuck. I rough this end for the next operation. I then took the part to the mill and I placed it in a hex collet block. I intend to hold this tool in a drill chuck, so I'll cut a hexagon to make sure it can't slip. My usual approach is to cut two opposing faces, measure this, and then adjust my cut depth to ensure I've got the correct size. And then I repeated this process for all six faces. This part's now starting to look rather hexy. I next clamped the guide shaft so I could mill a 6mm deep slot for a 6mm keyway. Wait, the keyway should have been 3mm deep, half the depth of the key. I decided the best approach is just to make a custom key. So I clamped some stock with lots of stick up and then I milled it all in one setup. Milling in one setup ensures everything is square, true and accurate and it makes the job much faster. I want the top end of the key to match the slot. I then got busy and filed it to make it a nice fit. Depending on the type of die I'm using, I want this key to be removable. I'm going to drill and tap through the key and into the shaft to ensure alignment. And then I'll tap these holes with a screw to retain the key. I plan on using a tapping alignment tool because the tap I'm using is quite small. I made this tapping guide a long time ago and this is the first project I've ever actually used it on. I then drilled a clearance hole for the screw head and decided that this didn't work very well. So I decided to mill it out instead. And yeah, I wasn't very happy with this approach. I then realised my mistake. I measured the wrong screw when I was checking the head clearance size. At this stage this key is a complete write off. I decided to start again, but change tact. But instead of using screws, I've lapped it to make sure it's a nice, light press fit. I'm much happy with this solution, and I'll call this part done. Now onto the sliding body that holds the dies. Using tailstock support, I initially roughed the outside. I then drilled the part before opening it up with the boring bar. And testing the die, it's a very nice fit. Actually, it's a bit too nice, it's stuck. Really stuck. Um, yeah, so this is how you make a single sized die holder. Thanks for watching. I managed to extract the die using a bolt, and then I opened up the bore a bit more off camera. I took a skim pass on the outside to finish off this stage, and then parted it off. Assessing my dies, I have a few different retaining styles. Some require three screws at 90 degrees, and others have two opposing screws. I'll make my holder to suit both types. I mounted a dividing head on my mill, and initially spotted four locations for drilling. Uh, make that five locations, because I miscounted. We'll just call out a maker's mark for extra style. After firing my cameraman for missing me drilling here, I chamfered and then tapped the holes. I now need to make an internal keyway in the body. This could be a challenge. Luckily, this mill came with a slotting head, and it's probably time I tried it out. 
There is what looks to be a clapper box on this slotter, which innuendo aside, prevents the tool rubbing on the return stroke. I adjusted the screw to allow a bit of movement, but I didn't want too much as the bore is fairly small and I didn't want to crash my tool if it moved excessively. And then it was a simple process to slot the part, and the result was an excellent sliding fit. Setting this slotter up was a lot of work to align everything. So it got me thinking, if you don't have a slotter, there are of course other ways. Fastest and easiest method would be keyway brooches, preferably using an arbor press, but I'll demonstrate with a hydraulic press. And a few more passes with a spacer would quickly establish the full slot. The other way would be to manually slot using the mill, either by raising the table or using the quill. And finally, if you are adventurous or extremely bored, you could always try the trusty hand file. So the body actually looks a little bit boring and I'm gonna add some grip on the outside. Now this part is really starting to look groovy. Time for a makeover. I'm going to tape up the critical surfaces and sandblast the parts. Sandblasting usually allows for a better cold bluing finish. And as usual, I can barely see what I'm doing when sandblasting, so there's no point in trying to show you either. After cleaning and applying the cold bluing compound, the parts get a nice relaxing oil bath overnight. The cold bluing was definitely better where the surfaces were sandblasted. Now to test everything out. I mounted my drill and gave it a firm hammer tap just to make sure it can't come loose as there will be a fair bit of torque on it. I've prepared a blank for an M12 thread and added some cutting paste for lubrication and we're ready to roll. Under power, the key held up fine, and you can see that the die holder pulls itself forward onto the part, cutting the thread. And the thread is clean and concentric. And the result is a very nice clean thread. And now it's time for some fine sensitive threading. I removed the key and swapped to a smaller die, and the die holder can now freely spin on the shaft. The die holder will only thread when I apply friction to the outside. This thread also turned out decent, although I must confess I forgot to lubricate this one, but still not bad. And that's it. This is going to save lots of time and make threading much more enjoyable. Thanks for watching.